in the moments of time when we are looking for how do I make a life that's well worth living and find a retirement of any kind at all, we have to think about what's going on in our minds. Are we thinking that we want to work nine to five for the rest of our life, 40 hours a week, that we're playing into someone else's fantasy, somebody else's dreams, working for a corporation, which we probably are serving people both internally and externally quite well, but is it really what we want to be doing with our, well, retirement years? And the truth is anybody can retire at almost any time. The only problem is you have to still provide for yourself. You have to still have a shelter or the, what I call the three S's, which is shelter, sustenance, and service. And what I mean by that is we have to have a place that we can at least shelter ourselves, whether it's a tarp out in a campground or in a place that's sort of out of the way from people so we don't get too monkeyed with by strangers who just think they want to play with our stuff. We also need to have some sustenance. And usually in a time of COVID, that's a lot of good quality canned goods, a lot of quality protein, such as chicken ham, pork, or beef, and sometimes beans. But you know what that can do for me if you don't have a good public restroom anywhere nearby. But my point is that it's marvelous when people want to do something for someone, but they really don't know what to do for them. Here's the reality. All men and most women want to serve someone and serve in a way that makes sense to, well, their soul how they feel, what they do, what they think. But I'm having marvelous conversations with young college students who have picked a career that will never get them anywhere at all. They'll end up in retail hell, no offense to those who work in retail, because we desperately need good quality food handlers. We desperately need good quality grocers. We definitely need good quality people who can stock a shelf and do things like that and be completely self-sufficient or happy with themselves. But what I'm saying to you is that if you have a job that's not going well for you and that's not really producing for you, then get the hell out. There's other things in life to do, and while I may be homeless, I'm not unhappy. That's the most amazing thing to a lot of people. I am not unhappy. What I'm unhappy about is the violation of my rights. What I get angry and raging, absolutely raging, almost like a lunatic about is when someone violates my personal space by putting their hands in my pockets and inner pockets of my actual inner sweatpants that keep me warm at night. Like they have some motherfucking right to put their hands on me in the night. And they sometimes go further than that and put their hands in my little pouch where I keep a few things. And if you fucking get caught with your hand in my pants, I'm going to pound you into the fucking ground. Because you are not my girlfriend. You're not my ex-wife. And you certainly aren't my college girlfriend who I haven't seen in a long time. So let's be really clear. Your rights begin and end with you, but it doesn't extend to who you want to touch in life. It doesn't extend to who you want to monkey with in life, and it doesn't extend to you in any fucking mental health concept, psychological concept, or intellectual concept of my life. Your life is yours, and let's talk about legal liabilities, but let's really talk about elderliness. You see, if you're in the elder years, you don't want to be waiting until you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s when you can practically do nothing to travel in life. You really want to be traveling in your late 40s and your early 50s, so how do you plan a life if you're a college student to make sure that you get in and out of work really well so that you can make a real retirement and enjoy your retirement like my late father and my late mother did. They went traveling. They went to see all the monuments of the nation practically. I'm not sure if they hit them all, but most of them. And all the military sites and all the things that were popular, popular to their generation of people. And they were raised in the early, early 30s. So let's talk about what's different for each generation. What's different for each generation is what's important. In my generation, learning how to work smarter, not harder, was everything for me. I played my life in less than 20 hours a week. And I lived, not high in the hog, but I lived with my family. I enjoyed my family Friday days when we'd go for lunch and a little bit late lunch and then we go for a movie or we go shopping for my son who was from a marvelous other foreign country. But the reality is he was my it was my time with my family. And then about five o'clock my late spouse would go off and do her thing and she'd be okay with that and I'd be alone on the weekends and do things with my son and we'd have marvelous dinners we'd watch movies and we'd do things together and my marvelous little screen tv that my wife provided for our family the reality is in life you don't have the right to monkey with someone's life and if you haven't figured that out then you haven't figured out anything about love about life or the reality of the elderly years we have a lot of elderly people right now who profess the Lord's name and go to churches around the city. And those churches don't have one clue that those people are struggling in poverty. They can barely feed themselves. They thankfully have sometimes some food properties and food pantries that they can go to to get some food. But it's usually sort of monkeying in that they can't really get everything they need in one stop shop. They got to travel to different places, different cities, different things. And that's okay if you have money for gas. But if you don't, you have to go on a bus. That takes a lot longer. Then you got to figure out how to carry it all and tote it all with wheels. And I used to use a marvelous um, 
what do they call it, Canty Thermos, or, or um, I apologize, I can't think of the word in, in English, I can think of it in Japanese, but the reality is it was one of these things with wheels. You normally carry your, your cans of soda pop in it, or for some folks, the cans of beer in it, oh, not, not a beer, man. But openly, it's one of these marvelous things, and that's how I would carry my luggage. It's a great way to keep it out of the rain, it's a great way to have food and other things in it, but it's a safe way to travel. It doesn't shout, I'm a traveler, I'm going to a camping trip, or whatever. It's marvelous because then you have your way to set it down when you're in a store and do things. But there's always somebody who wants to monkey with you and monkey with you more. In life, we have moments of time to say how we feel. And what I'm talking about is the elderly years. How are you prepared for the elderly years? I feel elderly, but even though I'm not, I've become more elderly physically because people monkeyed in my physical health who had no right, no lawful right, to know one thing about what I was doing in my medical health. Absolutely no right to talk about total strangers. I've got some Marvel Marvelous motorcycle teams going by, so that's probably what you're hearing, and I'm sort of jealous because I'd like to be on a, a trike if I could. But the reality is I'm also aware of the fact that a little man like me would probably get shaken to death on a thing like that, and I don't want to do that for me or anyone that I love. So the reality is that I'm looking for some help, not at all. What I'm saying is how you plan your life right now, where you go in life right now, how you decide your last 40 to 50 years of life, however long God gives to you, is really important today. But how you plan your life at 20 is also important today. How you monk yourself and fuck yourself over when you get involved in somebody's life that you have no rights to, that can also monk your whole life. So let's be clear, there's liabilities for people who play with other people's lives, but in life we have to decide how are we going to live. Are we going to be mature enough to decide how to plan our life so we have enough money practically for retirement and that we're not having to hit all the food pantries all the time, that we can practically still go out to dinner, go out to movies, go do our camping trips, go do our travel trips, go to hotels sometimes, go to Best Buy sometimes, I don't know, whatever the heck it is that you're interested in. But if you haven't figured out how to plan that, then you're really not planning your life because the elder years comes pretty quick. And I'm feeling old and gray all the time because people ruin my physical health. People I didn't even want anywhere near my physical health or my physical medical health. But what I'm talking about is the reality of life. The reality of life is that life goes on. And life goes on every single day. And you know what? Even though I'm homeless, I'm content most of the time. Because God leads me. He guides me to people, to places, to experiences, to lessons, to marvelous things pulled from a trash. And I wouldn't have practical clothes on my bottom half of me if it wasn't for those loving people who'd say, I don't feel like wearing this anymore today. I'm just going to throw it away. And it's brand new. And I pick quite clean. So what I'm talking about is that what God provides for you is not what God provides for me. But you still have to be able to provide for yourself. And I'm always amazed at the number of people who walk by me and completely ignore me as if they could never be homeless. The truth is that someday you might be homeless because you didn't plan your life well. You didn't plan your career well, you didn't plan your school well, and you just didn't think about how that career that you were choosing to study was going to pay for your life, all your life. Because some people who are pet people might be marvelous vet technicians, but they're going to make the same wage for the rest of their life. So, I'm not putting that down. I think we need those people. We definitely need people teaching young people how to handle a dog, and certainly how to man manage a cat, or I met a Roger Rabbit the other day. But the point is, whether you had a gerbil like me as a kid, or whether you've got pets to care for, you're still going to have to feed those things. You're still going to have to house those things, and you're still going to have to shelter those things, but most of them do fine just living outside with you and with me. But my point is, and I'm not trying to be silly, I'm not trying to be unfrank, but the reality is you better plan your life, because retirement years come fast, and people time out of jobs. And sometimes we're just so bored in our job and we're so sick of doing the same thing over and over again that we literally just say, you know, I've had enough. I'm going on life's adventure with what I've got and I'm going to figure out how to provide for myself every day. And that's what I do. I provide for myself every day in homelessness. And only occasion do I reach out to someone that I once cared for and say, hey, would you mind ordering me some Chinese food because I really would like to eat something sort of marvelously healthy. The problem is that when you're homeless or when you look scraggly like me, that some people like to monkey food, and that's a dangerous to you and me. But, you know, we live in America where people think that anything goes, and it doesn't under federal law. So we have to think about that a little later. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to really plan your elderly years and really plan on how to use pantries and how to get the best food that you can to keep your elderly years healthy, self safely safely sorry and wise thanks for listening